I don't. Here, let me introduce you. What's your name? Don't you uh, Karen Strano Taylor. So what do we hi? Hello. Hi. There's are millions and millions of people watching you right now. Fantastic. Actually nine. Uh, nine, but I like nine. It feels more intimate. <laughs> Actually right. ten. Just change ten. Ten, it feels more because intimate. Because of your presence. So. Um, just introduce myself. My name is Kareth Strano-Taylor. I am the, the Democratic nominee for Congress in Pennsylvania's 5th Congressional District that covers 24% of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, spread out over 16 counties. Okay. It is rural, it is white, and it is impoverished. Our unemployment rates are high, our underemployment rates are higher, and we have a Republican incumbent who says things like, we can't raise the minimum wage because no one should strive for the minimum. And he thinks that's an answer. I'm glad you find humor in that. So he should, doesn't understand that so that's not an answer. So they should strive for less than minimum, is what you're With saying. With me? So he's been in four terms. Um, there are people there that are ready for this. I ran in 14. Now I'm running in 16 because no one else was going to run, and there would have been an empty spot on the ballot, which I find unacceptable. Right? We should be challenging every single one of these scenes. I'm a Bernie crowd. I'm a Bernie delegate. I endorsed him early. Um, I had watch parties at my house. And I believe in this. And I think more people than we know believe in this. It's just a matter of how we make it happen. So can you tell I'm a little excited about this? <laughs> okay, I lived, I've lived in my congressional district for 35 of my 40 years on this earth. I grew up in a really small town. My dad was a mechanic. They had their own business. I got the free lunch ticket in school. I was one of those kids. Um, public education was my ladder, right? I went to a well-funded public high school. I went to Penn State with Pell Grants. I graduated law school with federally subsidized student loans, and I moved back to my hometown. I opened my own business with my husband. We had kids. I was considering taking my kids to another school, and instead of that, I decided I'd run for school board, and I did, and I won. And then I, won, I was president for two stinks, years. So instead of choosing a better school, you stink changed. is a bad word. It used to be awesome. It graduated me and my friends, and it was amazing. We had valedictorians five years after graduation at a number of colleges. It was a powerhouse. And then they stopped funding everything. They said a new, a new board came in, and they said. Teachers are more like daycare workers. They just need to manage the chaos and start hiring teachers, paying them terribly. We have teachers leaving our school right now because they're not being paid enough. And I'm fighting the fight, but I need more people to run for school board, which is a project that I'm working on right now. I built coalitions with the, with the folks that were there. I was the only Democrat on my board. They elected me president twice. So I built coalitions that got things done. It wasn't always the same coalition. Different people had different issues and concerns. So for budget issues, I would really focus on talking to these people who appreciated the, the map and the, the clearness of our challenge. You're talking about people on the board. On the board. There's nine members. I was the only Democrat. Right? So I had to build coalitions to get things done, but I was very effective. I ran really good meetings. People liked being at them. Public came. They engaged with their questions. It was it was really good. I'm an attorney. Obviously I had a law firm. Um, I practiced law with my ex-husband for six years after the divorce. I know compromise. I'm really, really good at it. I represent the kids that come through the foster care system in my county. And I was just named Child Advocate of the Year this year by my Pennsylvania Bar Association, which was a wonderful honor. I did a lot of things. We were we were able to preserve all of our programs by a really modest tax increase because people get frightened when you say tax increase, right? But it was the price of $2 a month to be able to keep all of our programs. And we had just sent three kids to um, meddled in state wrestling. Like we, had, we had done things that we want to preserve and be proud of, and when you give people the choice between a little $2 a month or keep all of our programs, they chose to keep their programs. But it took a lot of dialogue. It took a lot, like I had to get people to move over and we ended up winning by one vote. They tell me they don't want us to raise their taxes because you have to ask the follow-up question. What are you willing to lose? We can't afford to do it all with this money. We need a little bit more. So if you don't want to pay a little bit more, which I respect, help me choose what we cut. Now, Running for Congress, you want to know how that happens? Bring it. I'll try to do it without swearing. You're welcome to swear. Uh, well, okay, so I get to be... Okay, so in 2013, I was appointed to the National Federal Relations Network, which is an association of school boards all across the nation, and if you're appointed, you're asked to go engage your federal representatives on issues that matter to schools. Okay. So I made an appointment with Congressman Thompson. Okay, on my birthday, I get to go meet with my congressman. Right, kind of cool. So 
the 18-day the shutdown had recently ended, right? Because it was November 26th. And I make the appointment, I go, and we meet, we sit, and I open the meeting because he just sat there. So I asked him if we were going to be open in the spring. Open for business in the spring. Wait, wait, wait. What was going to be open for business? Government. Government. Because we had just done the shutdown. Oh. So I, are we going to be open for business in the spring? And wait, he says, what was shut down? The government. It was the federal government. Federal government. Federal government. 2013, 18 days in October. Okay. Shut it down, right? And he says to me, oh, the shutdown? That was a joke. I'm stunned. So I asked him. I think he thought I was a fan and I was going to laugh. At his, like, I think he thought he was being funny, right? That's fair. Um, but I asked him to whom he thought that was funny. I had people in my office for three weeks worried that they weren't going to get paid. I had a guy, um, National Guard, who was called up for his duty on the weekend, had to give up a weekend of overtime, but didn't know if he was going to get paid from the government and was he going to be able to pay his child support that month. And he calls me and he says, what do I do? Because they're going to put me in a jumpsuit and haul me in if I'm late on my child support. But if I, right? Legitimate question. I had a retired couple write a check for their life savings to buy a federally foreclosed home. They couldn't get a deed. The government cashed their check and they couldn't get their deed. All right, I like me. this lady and the people Panicked. here are saying I like this lady. Panicked, right? I had seniors coming in asking if they were going to get their social security checks. These are people, we have 70 seniors in my little town alone that have to go to the food bank for food every month because their social security doesn't cover their basic food needs. And they give seniors an extra box at the beginning of the month, 70 people, 70 in my little town, go to the food bank. So so what happened to so continue in this meeting? You so took I it as, the question or? To him, who, do you, who do you think thought it was funny because all of these people were suffering? What do you want me to go tell them? Because when I go home, I'm gonna say I met with our congressman and this is what, he has to say, and he said, we got a good deal. Now, only policy wonks will really love this analysis, but I said, what deal did you get? He said, we got the sequestration budget numbers. Now, this is kind of old history. It's 2013, but you remember, yeah. right? Someone just gave you 50 bucks. Oh my God, okay, this is working. So. So we got a good deal. We got the sequestration and budget put numbers. Your on the, and put your link Did on you? The chat and, and Thank you. Yeah. Donate. And someone. Uh, Twenty-seven dollars, man. Oh, I pressed the button. Oh, too many times. Someone I pressed named the button. Person just said passion, love it. Mark says if you like her, donate. I just gave fifty. Put the link <laughs> on there. And uh, and Mike Olson just pledged you a million dollars. Brilliant, Michael Olson. Brilliant. Too bad I can't take all of it, but we could give it to a lot of other Bernie Prats that are running for Congress. Okay. Right. There you go. So keep on with this meeting. Okay, so I said to him, you negotiated the sequestration budget numbers in June. Those were done, right? You, you already got those. What did you get in October? We got a good deal. Okay, wait. I just asked you what you, and all he kept doing was repeating it. I don't understand what a good deal is. He didn't well, we get anything. We don't either, and he wouldn't tell her. They didn't get anything. He kept saying the sequestration numbers, but when I challenged that they already had them in June, he couldn't, he didn't have another talking point. He didn't have another way to say, he didn't, he uh, had, he had he didn't get he didn't anything. The like entire shutdown was a hoax. Okay. It was a joke. It cost us money. That's what he meant when he said it was a joke. So. That's what he really meant. He was being literal. That's really funny. I never thought of it exactly got, that yeah, way. I got that almost right away. That's oh, why see, that adds a layer of nuance that I had never thought about, no matter how many times I told that story. So clearly that conversation's going nowhere. So I say to him, representing public education, how do you, what, do you what's, what are your thoughts about public education? And he says to me, if we took the lessons from charter schools and applied them to public schools, we'd all be better served. No, we, yeah, we really want to work with the co let's So just, I asked let's him, just sure what lessons? Give me a list of things that we as public school board members and teachers and parents of students need to know better from charters. And he repeated it. We need to lean the, take the lessons from charter schools and apply them to public schools, we'll all be better served. And then a light bulb went off. He's what he meant was, and what he meant anything. was, we bust the unions. Oh, well, if we so, got rid of the unions, we'd all be better served in private charter so, schools. All right, so please. I'm asking him what solutions he has to offer to the challenges that we face in public schools, right? We're losing funding, and the, mo the charter school movement nationwide, specifically in Pennsylvania, is a mechanism by which 
private corporations can pull public education money out of the coffers and spend it irresponsibly, not graduate more kids, not do a better job than we do, but they don't have to pay union wages to their teachers. Who is him? These, these are the public, the private charter schools spreading out across the, the nation. So the last question that I posed to him during this meeting was what we were going to do to solve our public schools challenges, right? We're underfunded, um, we're being overburdened with regulations, the testing expectations are out, out of control. I was expecting to hear him speak to these issues and instead he proposed that we take lessons from private charter schools and apply them to publics. Okay. He couldn't identify any lessons. They don't do things better than public schools do. They don't graduate more kids. They don't do it more quickly. They don't test higher on their scores. They don't. Gra so my conclusion was, and I asked him if what he meant was we bust the unions. That's his solution. So for his excuse of switching to, to charter schools is pretending that they're better in some ways. To justify but there being more of them. They make more money because they have more power because they can. Screw. And they get money from the government. They're getting public dollars. Public education dollars are funneling into private corporate schools. That's the problem. But when I asked him if that's what he meant, he looked at his shoes. He had no response. He didn't say, no, that's not what I mean. No, no he didn't say anything. Okay, so I let then, myself out. Right. That was the end of the meeting. And then what happened? I was pissed. I was angry, and I drove home angry, and I woke up the next morning angry, and decided that I should run for Congress. I can do that job better than he can. I can do it a lot better than he can. <laughs> Bring it. So I got on Amazon, and I looked up, how do you run for office? And I bought three books. And they arrived three days later, because I didn't have Prime yet, so I waited. Yeah. And by the time they came, you're a newbie. You'll learn, right? I'm, I fixed it now. But by the time they arrived, it had waned. Like what is I waned? wasn't quite as angry. Some time had passed, right? And I had a chance to kind of evaluate whether I was really going to run for Congress. I'm a single mom. I own a business. I'm on my school board. I'm the chair of a rules committee for the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania. I'm a busy lady. Like, am I really going to run for Congress? How many kids you got? Two. How old? Eleven and eight. Brilliantly funny. They were wonderful children and they were remarkable little humans. So I'm quite proud of them. Um, and I had to consider the sacrifice that they were going to face. I was going to be gone more, right? But this is the really cool thing about the story. We get away from these times. Can you come? So I was still married then. No, I was still working with my ex husband then. Okay. And we got along brilliantly. Shared the custody of the kids. And I went in and I asked him if he would run the business, take the cases, so I could run for Congress. We differ politically. He was a Republican, now he's an independent. But he said to me, I think you'd be really good at that job. And he managed my office, took my cases for nine months so that I could run for Congress. He had no obligation to me. He did it because he believed that it can be better. Although we differ, it was a really lovely, kind gesture that he made to me.